Hey everyone, in this Fusion 360 video, we'll be covering four different methods for creating T-spline forms. The first step to creating a T-spline form is to click the purple Create Form icon at the top, and this will take you into the Sculpt environment. Under the Create menu, you see different tools for creating T-spline forms. This top section shows all the different primitives that you can use. Box, plane, cylinder, sphere, torus, quad ball, and pipe. These primitive shapes are essentially cookie cutters and really pre-built T-spline forms. We'll choose the box, and now I can specify a plane to place my box on. In this case, I'll choose this bottom plane right here. And next, I can specify a center point by clicking on the origin, and I can move my mouse anywhere to start drawing out my box's 2D profile. I'll click again, and now I'm at the final dialog window where I can actually dimension the box to any size that I want. I'll set the length equal to 175 millimeters, the width equal to 150 millimeters, and the height equal to 75 millimeters. Alternatively, I could drag these direct manipulators right here to change the dimensions. If it's jumping at too large of increments, I can zoom in and lower it down to 75. In addition to specifying the dimensions of our primitive, we can also specify the number of faces that we have in any direction. By default, Fusion will set, uh, for this box, two faces in each direction. But if I want to add an additional face, set of faces along the length, I can drag this manipulator to the direction of the plus to add a face that way. And if I want to add an additional face in the width, I can also change it here in the dialog window from 2 to 3. With that all set, I'll click OK, and I'll hit Finish Form, and that's our first T-spline form. Under the body is all hide the visibility of our box, and click Create Form to get started on our next uh, T-spline form. For this one, we'll be using the sketch called Revolve, so I'll turn that visibility on. And under the Create menu, we can see different tools to create T-spline forms, uh, specifically these at the bottom that use uh, sketches as inputs, Extrude, Revolve, Sweep, and Loft. In this example, we'll choose Revolve, and the first step we need to do is to specify a profile. I'll click this curve right here. And I also need to specify an axis. I'll click the blue axis right here. And now my profile is revolved about that axis. I can specify the extent by which that profile is revolved from a full revolution to an angle. And we'll set that equal to 90 degrees. And, can, and I can also specify the uh, direction. So I'll change that from one side to symmetric, and you'll see that it does now revolve at 90 degrees symmetric about that uh, plane right there. I'll click OK. And that's another way to create a T-spline form. Again, I'll hit Finish Form, and I'll hide that surface. I'll enter the Sculpt environment again, and I'll turn on the visibility of uh, my sweep sketches. And a sweep, what this does is it essentially drags this profile along a particular path to create a surface. Under Create, I'll choose Sweep. I'll specify my profile. And I'll specify the path. And you'll see that it sweeps this profile along the path. I can change the number of faces that I have, either going along the path or along my profile you'll see that my profile doesn't perfectly match the sketch that I had initially, and this is because I don't have enough faces. Along the profile, I'll change the number of faces from 8 to 24, and you'll see that my profile is uh, matched a lot closer now. We can change the orientation from perpendicular to parallel, and you'll see that it now sweeps my profile uh, with the same orientation along the path, rather than rotating it to keep it normal along the path. In this case, we actually want to go back and set it to perpendicular. And I can also change uh, the distance along this path that I sweep my profile. I can drag this direct manipulator here to reduce the distance. Or I can specify a number here, maybe 0.5, to sweep half the distance along my path. I'll click OK. And then I can click Finish Form to create another body. I'll hide the visibility of that body, and one last time I'll enter the Sculpt environment. The last method that we'll be showing here to create a T-spline form is Loft. 
So first, I'll turn on the visibility of my loft sketches, the center line, the circle, and the triangle. Under Create, I'll choose Loft. And now I can select my two profiles. I'll select the triangle and the circle. And you'll see that it creates a direct transition between the triangle and the circle. That's because I just selected those two profiles. If I then select this curve right here, Fusion is going to tell me that it failed to create the body. And this is because I need to specify that this curve isn't a third profile and that it's actually a center line. So under Swap, I'll choose Convert to Profile, and I'll change that to Convert to Center Line. You'll see now that I have a transitional shape between my triangle and my circle that follows this curve along the center. Again, to uh, better match my profile on this end, I can change the number of faces from 8 to 16, and you'll see that that profile is matched a lot closer now. I'll click OK and I'll click Finish Form. So there you have it. Those are four different ways to create T-spline forms within Fusion 360.